Reverend Godwin Abba. Romans chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 3 and then 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 to verse 5. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law had dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she's loosed from the law of her husband. So then while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. Now concerning the things you were of, ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. This one we're looking at focus on building relationships and building marriages. And one of the sub-focus we'll be considering this morning is dealing with unspoken feelings. Dealing with unspoken feelings. There are feelings you may be seated. There are feelings within us that either we are scared of talking about or we don't want to raise an eyebrow or don't want to cause any form of suspicion from our spouses or the person we may be planning to get married to. There are many unspoken feelings that have caused depression in homes and marriages. There are many unspoken feelings that have caused people that were being proposed to to just withdraw without any formal consent or any formal agreement between the fiance and the fiancee. We've heard of cases, if not seen, of how people agreed that they were going to marry each other and all um, family members came together, wedding, traditional marriage was done, wedding date fixed, and then it was on the wedding day, and the guy was in church waiting for the lady to show up, and the lady was nowhere to be found. One hour gone, the uh, man of God, everybody, the, the brother trained, everybody waited, and the lady was nowhere to be found. The question was, if the lady was going to pack up the relationship, why hadn't she done it before the wedding day? There were unspoken feelings. There were hidden truths. There were hidden things that maybe she could not express. Or is it the one that on the wedding day, the guy wouldn't show up at all? They called his phone, the phone was off. They went to where they expect or suspect that he could be. He was not there to be found. Why did he pack up? That marriage, right, I mean that, yes, the wedding, right on the wedding day. Why didn't he pack it up before the wedding? Why didn't he call the lady and say, okay, come, there are certain fears I have within me that I don't think this marriage was going to work. Why would he have to wait until the wedding day? He has thought of everything, waited and waited and waited, thought of everything, and maybe that wedding morning, he said, Kai, I can't cope with this person. But the truth is, what he couldn't cope with was the lady away. Why are there so much depression in marriages today? The woman is depressed. The man is depressed. And yet nobody can open up to speak to each other. So there are feelings that have been locked up, bottled up. And at every tiny trigger, you see the level of irritation each person is against the other. To the point that they can turn the house upside down. Dylan. With unspoken feelings. There are four feelings we're going to see. And then the fifth one will break them down into different measures. This morning. From the scripture where we read. The Bible said the only thing that is bound to separate the man from the woman is called death. That is the only thing that is bound to separate the man from the woman. So if a man is still alive and the wife is separated from, 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 from him... The Bible said the woman commits adultery. There are some things we're going to be looking at this morning. And in case you have any question, that is the particular question I'm expecting right now, particularly from the first scripture we read, Romans chapter 7, verse 1 down to verse 3. If you have any question on that, please draft it down. If I don't explain it in my teaching, I should explain it at the cost of answering questions this morning. Because somebody will ask, what about somebody who divorced, married another person? Should the other person who is left be waiting who commits the adultery or commits the sin? 
If you have such questions, just pen them down. From the second scripture where we read, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it's 1 to 5. He's saying, in case the man cannot hold himself, let him marry. If the woman cannot hold herself, let, it, let, him, let, let her marry. That goes to say, God, marriage is God's plan for God's people. Are you understanding me? God wants the single lady to be married. God wants the single guy to be married. So we're dealing with unspoken feelings under the focus of building healthy relationships and building healthy marriages. And the first feeling we're going to deal with is the feeling of safety. That are not expressed. Feeling of safety that are not expressed. A guy proposes to a lady. The lady accepts the proposal. And then she begins to develop cold feet in the relationship. And the guy begins to wonder why the lady no longer picks his call. Or the lady is not as open as she used to be. Or it could be vice versa. Where the guy indeed proposed to the lady, it wasn't the lady that proposed to the guy. Because what the guy saw from afar was different from what he is now seeing at a very close range. And then the guy begins to ask himself, if I go ahead with this marriage, am I going to be safe? One of the unspoken feelings of, in relationships and marriages are, are the feelings of safety. Somebody wants to be safe about the future of that relationship. They want to be safe about the future of the marriage. That is why when a guy drags a lady for too long a time, if the lady is in her right senses, she will say, hey! Hold on for a while. Please, where is this relationship heading to? Because nobody wants to be in a relationship just for accompaniment. Nobody wants to be in a relationship just for the fun or for the name. Let me know, where are we heading to? Relationship, we, we end up in either ways. In marriage or in heartbreak. In marriage or in heartbreak? Okay, let me say three. In marriage, heartbreak, or amicable separation. The destiny of every relationship could either end up in marriage, in heartbreak, or amicable separation. But let it be defined. Let the future of that relationship be defined. Where are we heading to? In short, why are we even together? And most times, I will advise, that is the ladies that should ask these questions. The guys are the wooers. You know what I mean by wooer? <laughs> the ones that woo. That the toasters. So when the guy comes around toasting you, hello, you are beautiful. Thank you. I like your nose. Thank you. Uh, please, do you mind being my friend? No problem. Okay? From friendship, it begins to monitor your movement. Where are you? Who called you this morning? I was on Facebook yesterday night. I saw that you were still online around 11.30. Who are you chatting with? Before you start monitoring me, please, define the relationship. Define it. There is no safety in a relationship that is not well defined. And ladies, as you step into a relationship, please... Find out the future of that relationship. Now let's take it into marriage. Sometimes you find out that your spouse begins to withdraw or begins to express a sense of doubt about where the both of you are heading to. Sometimes the reason for that withdrawal could be that the person has looked into the future and looked at the present and cannot find an iota of safety in the future. And so they begin to withdraw to build a safety measure even before their hearts will be broken. I know of a woman who called for divorce before they, because she suspected that the man was going to divorce her. So she just said, let her honor herself. And then she told the man, before you divorce me, let me divorce you. Had the man spoken about divorce yet? No. Why would she do that? She saw signs that that marriage has no future. 
So the first thing everybody want to know in every relationship and marriage is the safety of that relationship and the safety of the marriage. And in wanting to find out or establish the safety of a relationship or the safety of a marriage, please find out what is there for you in the future. Number two, ask yourself, is there any rival? Is there any rival? Because most times there are rivals. Anything that divides your attention affects the safety of the marriage. That's the clear truth. Anything that divides your attention. Is there any rival, seen or unseen, visible or invisible, known or unknown? Is there any rival? Because sometimes that you find certain people getting attention from outside than they get from inside. Praise the Lord. And certain forces may have pushed them into that. Is there any rival? Is there anybody your wife seems to prefer to you, the husband? Is there any person your, your husband seems to prefer to you, the wife? I'm not talking about suspicion right now. I'm just talking about asking questions. You may ask yourself the question. And if your marriage is sound and open enough, you could ask each other the question. Not because of any suspicion. And please, the way you should ask it is not, are you seeing any man outside? No. Or are you seeing any woman outside? No. The best way to ask such question is, honey, I just want to find out again. When we got married newly, say, I am okay for you. Am I still okay for you? Are you getting me? With fun. Deliberately. Just ask it. Because nobody... Nobody finds comfort where there are rivals. In dealing with the feelings of safety, another thing the individual may consider are in-laws' hostility. Some years ago, some ladies were discussing, and one of them said, Kai, I won't get married to any man whose mother is still alive. Did you hear that? Did you hear me? One of the ladies said she would not like to get married to a man whose mom is still alive. Because according to them, they feel that mother-in-laws are going to pressurize them. And when I had that, I didn't speak to them anyway, but when I had that, the question I asked myself, if I had the opportunity to have asked them is, would you like to be alive and see your son marry? Because any lady who would want to get married to a man whose mother is alive, is a lady that after getting married would die before their children also get married. That's the prayer. But beside that, there, are, there is what we call in-laws hostility. Does this safeguard the future of a marriage or the future of a relationship? No. Many people are conscious about the hostility of in-laws. We have marriages where you see sister-in-laws fighting their brother's wife. And the man sits down in the parlor, crosses his leg, and sipping wine. In the name that it is their business. No, it is not. Every man should make sure that the wife is secured among his siblings and before his parents. Particularly when the woman, the wife, is a respectable, responsible woman. And please, if you're a lady, you want to get married or you're already married. If you're seeking calmness, kindness, and you're seeking hospitality and warmth from your in-laws, behave it. Are you understanding me? Behave it. One day you're going to be a mother-in-law. Before you call your mother-in-law names or your father-in-law names, one day you too, you're going to become one. So the way you want to be treated by your daughter-in-law, start treating your mother-in-law like that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Unspoken feelings. One is the feeling of safety. Am I safe in this relationship? Am I safe in this marriage? And please, in case you're in a relationship and you sense that there is no safety for you, 
Don't push it to happen. Just back out. A partnership with the guy. Hallelujah. A relationship where the guy is already beating you before marriage in the name of love and correction. Are you understanding me? Somebody greeted you. He said, hello, how are you? We smile. Then he looks at you. He said, who is that guy? He said, oh, it's somebody um, I knew from school. Okay, so because you know him from school, you are greeting him with your 32 open air. As if that is a crime. Then you ask, is there anything wrong with that? And the next thing is, oh, sir. Boom! On your face. Bikonu, if you were heading anywhere before, turn your back and be gone forever. Be gone forever. Any guy that can abuse you in courtship will kill you in marriage. That is the clear truth. Hear this. Husbands who don't beat their wives, it's not because they cannot beat. Are you understanding me? It's not because they cannot beat. But they are matured enough to express what we call self-control. Too matured. Too matured. Some of them are so provoked to the point that their hands are already shaking. Is it slap? Is it punch? And the man is... And he walks away. It's not because he couldn't have beaten her. But he's so matured to know that it is a high level of irresponsibility to lay your hands on your wife. He controls himself. If there is anything that qualifies the person for marriage, it's called self-control. Of all wise, self-control. If you don't have it, don't think of marriage. Vice versa. Praise the Lord. The second unspoken feeling we're going to be looking at is the feeling of being loved. The feeling, the feelings of being loved. Haya parakatasiata. Eladosia pratatash katasati. Sometimes the woman just wants to know if she's still being loved. Have you experienced cases where the woman wait, 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 wait. I say, honey, it's been long you told me I love you. Have you seen such? It happens. Oh, please, honey, do you remember the last time you told me? Remember the last time you told me I love you? As if it's a court that is cross-examining. I mean, a lawyer cross-examining um, somebody in the court. Can you remember the last time you told me I love you? And then the man begins to crack his brain. Um, I thought I told you yesterday. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know on the other hand, men don't have time asking the wife. If she remembers the last time she said, Am I right? Pastor Kizzy? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, the makeup of the man and the makeup of the woman is different. Women are made to seek attention. Now, when a woman asks you, do you really, your, uh, my wife asks me, um, Honey or baby, do you remember the last time you told me I, I love you? It's not for me to get angry. It's just for me to understand that she's expressing her nature. Women are made to seek for attention. And one of the ways they want to get the attention from the husband is when they share that, I love you. Hello. Oh, you are looking good. Praise God. If we're preparing to come to church, I and my wife, we use the same mirror. Preparing to come to church, she stands before the mirror and she's dressing. She won't shift. She will just be there. As soon as she hears me say, this cloth is looking good on you, she leaves the mirror. <laughs> it's in them. Your wife will walk across you 50 times. She's not looking for anything. All she just wants to hear is, Kai, 
this cloth looks good on you. When she finishes dressing, I'm not talking about my wife, I'm talking about women now. When women finish, so that I can eat this afternoon. <laughs> when women finish dressing, and they are leaving the house with their faces down, looking low. It's not because anything went wrong from anywhere. They are waiting for one voice. And for that voice to say something. This cloth is looking good on you. As soon as they hear that, everywhere will spark up. Pia! You mean it? The woman that was frowning before, her face, facial expression will change immediately. Women need such attention. Unspoken feelings of love. Am I loved? You know, nothing frustrates a woman like doubting the love of the husband towards her. Nothing frustrates her like that. She may be around because the marriage has already taken place. She may be around possibly because there are children. But yet, there are these doubts in her heart. Does this man really, really love me? Should, am I just a home, a home material? Um, what, what exactly am I to this man? She wants to feel loved. She may not tell you to your face as a husband, but she wants to feel loved. She wants it expressed. And the guys are so busy looking for reputation, looking for accomplishment, looking for achievement, that when one month is gone, without them saying to the wife, I love you, they won't recognize it, they won't realize it, that they've not told the woman, I love you. Praise the Lord. It's very rare for two people to be in a relationship. A man, I mean, a guy and a lady, and then you hear the guy complaining, you didn't send me a text message. Very rare. I've been expecting your text message since morning. You did. No, 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 no. It's the lady that will say, come, you didn't even remember sending me even one line, even one word, even one letter. Eh? You didn't even send. Is that how busy you are? Is this what our marriage is going to be like? Don't blame them. Women want to be very sure that they have been loved. They have been loved. Praise the Lord. Love is what creates that bridge that connects the woman to the man. Love is the backbone of every relationship. In as much as men may not be so much in demand of it, women don't play with it. It's like cooking soup without pepper and you expect it to be so sweet. Or soup without salt and you expect it to be sweet. To a woman existing in relationship or in marriage without hearing the word, I love you. It's like cooking soup without putting salt. If the soup must be complete then the word, I love you, must be there. In having the unspoken feeling of love, the next thing that is considered is whether the love is real. I was told of a lady who packed out of a relationship because she felt that the guy was loving her too much. Say, look, this level of love cannot be real. Who the love person like this? The lady felt too loved. Spoiled with gifts, spoiled with attention, and spoiled with monetary. All in the name of love. The lady said, no, this love is too, is too good to be real. She backed out. Certain loves are doubted. They are doubted. Is this love real? And funny enough, there are some guys who see relationship as an investment. They've weighed the caliber of the lady, they've weighed the capacity of the lady, and they say, okay, fine, anything I put to build this relationship, I'm going to reap it in marriage. It happens. And there are some ladies who see submission and also the release of attention to somebody they want to get married to as an investment. Say, no problem, let me just pretend. There are ladies that can pretend. Let me just pretend. They will call your mother that is in the village. They will go on their knees. Mommy, how are you doing? Mommy, I say, let me greet you. Mommy, I say, I'm talking to you right now. I'm on my knee. <laughs> mommy, God bless you. Hey, thank you, mommy. God bless you. Just to buy the woman's heart over. They are nice to the guy. They are sense when they are around the guy. So respectful. So caring. The question is, is that love real? Is it real? Only for them to get married 
and then moved into the guy's home. And the next thing, the woman begins to make the rules. Thank God we are married right now. Eh? You understand me? Um, Ogbonna. Yes, we are married right now. Okay, so please, I want to let you know, for this marriage to work, your mother should never enter this house. For this marriage to work, all these are sisters that are calling and calling and calling. Now you are married though, they should stop calling. For this marriage to work, all these your friends that I see around you, that none of them should come to this house so you can do your meeting outside. But if I catch them in this house, they know that fire is on the mountain. And the guy say, huh? Are you understanding me? Is the love real? And then you hear some people say, how did I get into this marriage? Some few days ago, a young man walked up to me. We just finished talking like this. I think one of our lunch hour prayers. And they said he's afraid of going back home. Married man. Yeah, I'm not joking. He met me. He said, I'm afraid of going back home. And he told me several things. The person he got, he got married to. And the pain he's been going through in that marriage. You know, some men are so disciplined that in their disciplined nature, they are treated like rags. Not because they cannot respond. There are ladies or women who take advantage of, undue advantage of the simplicity of men. I had a lady who said that, ah, my husband is so so and so. He can't beat me. He's an ordained minister in our church. He, he can't, be, you know if he beat me. Ordained though, ordained. Angels to the fight, oh. No, study the Bible. Angels fought in heaven. I stopped there. Praise the Lord. The lady said, my husband is an ordained minister. He can't touch me. So she kept misbehaving. And kept misbehaving. And kept misbehaving. Enough it. Enough it. Enough it beat me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is the marriage real? Can this love, sorry, is the love real? Can this love be open? You know, there are loves that are opudential and there are loves that are confidential. I'm not talking about sacred love. I'm talking about the person you are getting married to. Is your spouse bold enough to introduce you to friends. Bold enough. To introduce you to friends. If it's only at home that you are husband and wife. <laughs> then that marriage is not a marriage. You go for an occasion. The man tells the woman. Um, you see. Um, you will come in 30 minutes after I've arrived. You understand? Just come in 30 minutes after my arrival. Oh, the woman tells the man. Sorry we can't go together. Uh, no, you go your way, I go my way. Can that love be open? Any love that is secret has no future. Hello? Single ladies, somebody came asking your hand in marriage. Will you marry me? You say, give me some time to pray. Finally, you prayed. You say, okay, I think I'm ready to marry you. Let's go see my parents. He said, no, not now. Let's go see my pastor. No, I don't have time for those pastors. Let's just be doing our thing by ourselves so that nobody can confuse us. Any guy that will stop you from introducing him to your parents or introducing him to your pastor does not have a future with you. He has an ulterior motive. Life Center International, healing the broken world by the spoken word.